All right, I'm recording this now. So be aware, look lively. Okay, uh, let's do it. Hello everyone, welcome to the IPFS core implementations weekly sync. It is December the 9th. We are running out of time at the, in, of, for 2019. It's, it's rapidly dwindling away, uh, but at the end comes good things. So uh, if you're here, can you please put your name on the attendees list of the notes? I will put the notes in the chat right now. Jacob has volunteered to be note taker for today. So thank you, Jacob. All right. Uh, if you have a weekly update, uh, then please at the bottom of the document is the place where you can put that uh, and people will review it asynchronously. We won't go over it in this meeting, but uh, what happens when this meeting finishes is that we send a pull request to IPFS slash team management. Uh, and that's where we check each other's uh, weekly reports. I still haven't done mine, but I will get it done after the meeting as soon as I can. Um, so put it put it in there, please. Um, if you have an update, uh, that would be rad. And next up, we will go through the initiatives and see what progress we have on the things that we are working on. Um, cool. So, so people keep messaging me. All right, uh, upcoming and shipped uh, really see things. So last week we talked about how JSIBFS 040 had shipped. Next up, <laughs> I've made the issue for JSIBFS 041. Uh, and if you look at the issue, it's gonna be amazing. It's going to be really, really good. Uh, we're gonna have Unix FS 1.5 implemented. So you can now put metadata along with your imported files uh, so that'll be super cool ipfs uh, add performance uh, has increased uh, has increased decreased it's better now than it was significantly better uh, and also we have brand new apis um, finally our endeavor to uh, rewrite uh, the entire code base in uh, in promises and async iterators and things has has bubbled up to right up to IPFS. We have many modules that Refactor has been part of a seventy odd repo uh, Refactor, but it's finally done and it's going to yield huge benefits. Um, and I'm hoping to write a blog post on that for later this week. So uh, keep your eyes out. Um, not literally. Uh, so. That's that. Uh, does anyone else have any uh, questions or upcoming or shipped things they want to talk about before we move on? All right, let's move on. Move it on up. Uh, up. Testing and infra, they are together for a hack week this week. Um, I'm guessing there's no one. Uh, you, uh, yeah, Dirk, you're back home. Wait, weren't you with them? No. Uh, well, I don't think so. Oh, wait, Jim, am I on Zurich? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm in Vancouver. Okay, good. Just checking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. Uh, Jim, did you want to update us on anything? Um, Sorry, I didn't realize you were here. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's just uh, uh, several, um, a lot of initiatives going on. Um, a lot of work. Uh, Anton's joined the team, and he's done a lot of work on the um, uh, infrastructure, so getting things to spin up on Amazon Web Services. Um, so uh, he, he took that over from me, and that's going amazingly well. And um, Enrique's been doing a lot of work on uh, one of the test plans. And um, th th that um, Raul and Steven, they're, they're, it's going to be a big week because they're going to really try to nail some of the DHT issues and get that ready so they can uh, as a blocker for Go IPFS, the next release, and having them all together in one place, um, ex expecting big progress on that. So, and for myself, I'm I'm starting work on a new test test plans. Uh, Going to try to do some uh, network connectivity. Try to figure out how to hole punch through NATs and things in the test ground environment and simulate that. So. Nice. I should also mention that this work that is being done on the test ground um, will hopefully be completed in time for a now scheduled Go IPFS release 
0 0.5 for the 24th of December, I think, which is, it's going to be a really nice Christmas. Uh, so that was maybe last week that I heard that. So that could have changed. Um, but that's worth maybe noting down uh, for all of the, all of the viewers. Um, cool. Thank you, Jim. Uh, any, does anyone have any questions for Jim? All righty, let's move on then. Uh, so, Domain Gateway, uh, Lydell, are you here? Would you like to give an update? Uh, yep, uh, quick update. There's a relevant discussion uh, in IPFS Docs. It's started for around our new Docs website, but it, the problems are relevant to everyone. And basically, uh, our endeavor to migrate to CADV1 Base 32 uh, to expose sub to move from path based gateways to like subdomain gate gateways for websites. Um, all those topics are highly relevant uh, to the discussion. So if uh, anyone is interested, uh, there are good points made there. Um, and we are having a design review meeting tomorrow, I believe, at 4 p.m. Uh, Central European time. Uh, it's in IPFS community calendar. If someone wants to join, we'll be discussing topics from the, this issue. Um, it's mostly about are we able to uh, make it easier today to uh, publish websites on IPFS without worrying about relative paths, things like that. Uh, and there's also like companion uh, mixed into this discussion. Uh, However, going back to uh, actual development, uh, uh, we sort of uh, talked with Steven last week, uh, what needs to happen to unblock uh, peer IDs as CIDs in IPFS paths, uh, like IPNS paths uh, in Go uh, land, because it's an interesting situation when we solve this issue in JS land, but we still got, um, open APRs on the go. So the next step is to unblock the issue I linked. It's about uh, basically like accepting uh, uh, CIDs, uh, doing the same change we did and already shipped in JS. Um, and when that happens, we will bubble up uh, to go IPFS. Um, not sure if it will land in the next release. However, like the, the end goal is to coordinate both Go and JS to provide subdomain gateway functionality out of the box. And that's more or less uh, like the goal. Uh, this like support on path is nice, uh, but actually does not solve the underlying issues. Uh, so we will probably coordinate uh, in the beginning of 2020 um, shipping subdomain gateway out of the box. Because right now, if you want to run subdomain gateway, you need to run Nginx in front of Go IPFS or JS IPFS because uh, it does not uh, understand host header yet, but we will get that. And that's it, I believe, from my end. Nice, thank you, Lydell. The uh, Just for anyone who's listening, the TLDR with um, relative paths is that our gateways, we have like, IPFS IO slash IPFS slash hash. And then if you want to host a website there, all of your links have to be relative to that URL. Otherwise you end up at like some weird place off of the top of uh, IPFS.io and moving to a subdomain gateway. Uh, we get a security wins for doing that, but also like a lot of tools out there that generate static websites just don't do relative paths very well. So uh, they all assume like you can just have a, uh, it's just an absolute path like from a, a, the root of a website. So uh, it will be a big win on that. Um, cool, thank you, thank you, Lydell. Um, next up we have, uh, right, distributed signaling, I assume is still on hold um, and- yes. IP and S, um, Aiden or Hugo, yeah. are you around to? Uh, for IP and S over PubSub, the, uh, the lib P2P side is, I think, mergeable. So that, that's pretty cool. Uh, the IPFS side um, is, is pretty good, although 
due to some awkward dependency things, I can't merge that one until the data store uh, PR is merged. So yeah, a little awkward there. Yes, dependency hell, it's, it's a thing. All right, uh, cool, thank you. Uh, any questions or anything else? All right, uh, next up we have... Uh, Me again with data stars. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, there's an epic for tracking like the, the few steps we need to, to move things along. Um, the integration into GoIPFS, uh, thanks to uh, Stephen and Dirk, is, seems to be basically at the edge. It just needs uh, a review and a sign-off. Um, so hopefully that's that. And then I will be you know, doing what needs to get done there, but mostly moving to libp2p and dht, thanks. Awesome, thank you. Um, cool. Any questions for Aiden? All righty. Uh, next up, we have migration to multi hash keys. Um, I did hear from Adam actually, um, and he's looking to maybe um, come back to doing some work on this, um, but it's still on hold. Uh, basically, there is no bandwidth in my um, in my calendar at the moment to get this done. And so we'll probably, as Lida was saying, um, get this addressed in 2020 when it comes around. Ugh. Feels like we're in the future already. Um, all right, so bit swap updates. Dirk, do you have, oh, hey, currently going for review. Do you want to say anything else? Uh, not much more to say than that. Yep, I'm just currently going through review. I have a, uh, a test plan written in test ground. Uh, but we still need to, <clears throat> there's like a couple of other things that need to be finished off at test ground so we can do uh, traffic shaping and testing different versions and stuff like that. I'm also going to probably start working on the JavaScript side uh, just to make sure that we can get interrupt from the get-go. Nice. I wanted to ask actually, is there, will it be breaking to the JS IBFS bit swap? Uh, no. So, um, so the Go side will still respond uh, how the JS side expects. OK. Um, but it but has this, these extensions to make it better. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so the other way, it's, it's going to be less efficient unless I up, update JavaScript. Gotcha. Very cool. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, so any, any other questions for Dirk quickly? No? OK. Uh, the async await and refactor. Um, so I put these down. The JS IPFS HTTP client, there is a big re pull request. Um, uh, I'm, no, I'm a, a bit of a hypocrite, because I was encouraging people to do small pull requests, and then I go and land a massive one, because anyway, I didn't, um, I didn't expect it to be that big, but it turned out to be. Um, but. Uh, it's the HTTP client is kind of um, done and ready pending um, reviews and changes. Um, the size is now down to 88K. Um, it was 246, so that's a pretty big win. Um, and in JS IPFS, I'm working on that uh, this week, uh, bubbling up all of the good stuff. I'm hoping that libp2p will release a version of its async await refactor stuff, so that can also be included in, in this. Um, but yeah, JS, we're in on the final furlong hurdle uh whatever you want to call it um but it should be should be out relatively soon and the the idea is to have this these new apis which include like only only promise based apis only uh, only async iterators no lots of different types of streaming apis um uh, in the next release which is 0 0.41 and that's probably due to land uh, mid-January, but I'm hoping to be able to get a release candidate out before Christmas. Whew. All right, um, Jacob of Ashko, would you like to update us on the P2B side of things? Yes, we would. Uh, yeah, so we went through and on the daemon, uh, went through refactored the daemon to use the latest async lib P2P um, and bubbled that up to the daemon client and interop. So go and JS lib P2P 
neurop tests are passing for the refactor. So we didn't break everything, so that's good. Um, then we got the uh, refactor, the, the libp2p um, dialer to be token based instead of queue based. Um, that is pending a final review, but should be good to go. Um, this week we are finishing up ping stats and connection manager. Those are uh, smaller efforts, but they are the last of what we need to ship. Um, so once those in the token dialer are reviewed, um, we should be good to do a pre-release. So we are targeting a pre-release this week. We will do it. It will go out the door. Um, and then hopefully we'll get uh, an official RC out uh, early, early next week at the latest. Um, Bashko has been cranking away on docs. So we've got a bunch of improved docs for libp2p. Um, there's a new API doc. There is a new configuration doc, which we didn't have before, which explains what the configuration is. That's typically been a nightmare for people. Um, and we already got some community feedback that that is a vast improvement over what we had. Um, and then Bashko is going to be working on a getting started doc uh, for libp2p for um, more entry level stuff this week. Um, we're doing the remaining examples this week. And then, yeah, like I said, uh, the pre-release, and then we will start integrating into JS IPFS. Um, and then we'll work on creating a uh, full migration guide from there um, for all of our other users. That is it. Any questions? Super good news. Thank you, Jacob. If there are no questions, then we will move on to there's no design review proposals this week i left these two things from the week last week and the week before js ibfs and js ibfs http client are relicensing to a dual mit and mi is it mit or just mit i don't even know uh that plus apache 2 uh and um uh, so if your name is in the list in either one of these issues then please um please like sign off on that change if you're okay with it um uh, that that would be really useful um cool that's all from me any other blockers or asks all right any questions random questions that you thought of just now i had a like i guess base 32 question um what level of problem are we at with the fact that we advertise uh, CIDs in the DHT and not multi-hashes? Like, I, this is something from a while ago. I'm just wondering, like, how much of a problem it actually Switch is. Switch to multi-hashes is, I think, the solution or the proposed solution. Well, yeah, I guess I'm just wondering, like, how bad it is, given that I'm going to be spelunking in DHT. It's not, it's not anyway. super bad because CID v0s are just multi-hashes. But if we start using CID v1s, then it's bad, I believe. I think so we sent like two queries right now, don't we? Can you say that again? I couldn't really hear. I mean, uh, right now, um, if you want to do a query for a multi hash, you ask basically for CID v0. And I think we also ask for CID v1, just in case. Right, in the repo, so I thought Aiden was talking about provider records in the DHT. Yeah, okay, so Lydell's alluding to in the repo, I think, where we do a dual check. So if we don't find a piece of content under a CID v0, then we check CID v1 and vice versa. Uh, and then we go to the network. But you can't just check CID v1 because there are code there are codecs, right? Yeah, yeah, if it's possible to to do the conversion, that that is like. Is um, the solution to store everything in CID v zero? As a multi hash, as the key. But that's that, that like assumes an encoding, right? It assumes assumes a yeah an a um, encoding for the multi hash. Okay. So is, is like the answer basically it's not a huge deal, but when we switch to CID v1 by default, it's going to be pretty painful. Yeah, uh, essentially, the the thing is we we just need to solve these few problems before we switch, and then when we switch, there won't be any issue. Or like it will be painful if we don't solve these. Um, yeah, like you said, exactly what you said. 
Is there a timeline on like when we're hoping to get the, like actually say like, yes, V1 things by then? Uh, so uh, personally, I really wanted to get this done before the end of the year, but I just haven't had enough time to, to do it. And I was, I was actually hoping to maybe make some PRs to go IPFS to, to help it along. Um, if I don't have time this year, which I very unlikely will uh, not, uh, I, it will hopefully be next year, early next year, um, because this, like this is what's in the way of using CIDs in in subdomains and yeah. Peter, you got a question? Uh, yeah, follow up to that. Uh, does this actually affect uh, GX in any way? Because yes, we moved away from it, but a lot of stuff still uses it. Because everything there is CID zero. Yeah, I can't really comment on that. I've just, yeah, because I don't do any Go development, but I haven't hasn't Go mo largely moved away from G using GX. Largely, but not completely for okay. sure. There yeah, it probably does. GX stuff still. Yeah, um, I, 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 I can't really comment, to be honest, but I imagine it would. Right. Thanks. All right. Um, if there are any other questions, any other questions? Do we move on to park, what, what, parking lots? What's next? What, he's put something here. It's mine. Oh, Lido. Uh It's sort of like uh, yet another stra uh, strand of uh, unspooling that uh, issue I mentioned in the uh, subdomain gateway section, uh, part of uh, uh the so, like the solution or yeah there's a ongoing problem of uh, ipfs companion breaking origin security sandbox of dns link website uh, to put it in a short uh, sentence and uh, there's a proposal of uh, solving that um, by stopping the redirect uh, by default and if user chooses to open uh, un until we don't, we have a subdomain gateway on localhost. So uh, for now we would stop the redirect and we would open, uh, like if by default the regular HTTP server, that, that's probably IPFS gateway. And if user chooses to open the website from their local gateway, that would be in the browser, browser action menu as an view on the gateway, but that would open it in a new tab, excuse me, uh, in a new tab, uh, because it's a separate origin. Uh, we would uh, stop breaking uh, the origin separation um, of the original website. And the idea is to uh, preload the actual DNS link assets to the local gateway anyway. So in case that server is down, the data would be in local cached in the local network. Uh, same for like the co-hosting aspects or uh, distributing content in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. We would be uh, still seeding, even though the initial load was not from our local gateway. Um, I would just appreciate uh, some like sanity check. Um, on on that idea there's a link to the re uh, companion beta release um uh, if anyone is interested how the behavior of ipfs companion would be until we ship subdomain gateways um that's the place to raise your voice i guess cool thank you yeah, there's a lot. There seems to be a lot of um, yeah. <laughs> now that we're experiencing the pain firsthand, everyone's like, we should solve this. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's an old issue, and we need to just get on it and do it. Um, with with uh, just, uh, just sorry, just uh, like an additional data point is that we have the same problem with like subdomain gateways right now, like Cloudflare, and we got the D web link. Um, in both cases, uh, when you load a CID uh, through that subdomain gateway, you get this origin isolation, and Companion does not redirect that. But for the NSLink website, we do redirect. So the idea is to simply like unify this behavior. 
and give the security uh, isolation by default, which we we do provide for subdomain gateways. We, it's just for historical reasons we've been redirecting DNS links. Uh, that's it. Sorry. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Um, I've lost the notes, but I think we we're pretty much done. Right? Oh, there it is. Right. Yeah, we, we are all done. Uh, unless anyone else has anything else they want to say in the last two minutes of the call. I will bid you farewell until next time, uh, where I will see your lovely faces again. In the meantime, please do have a lovely week. Do some awesome IPFSing, and I'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Thank you.